Psalm 139 is, is just a beautiful psalm, as it was read to you in the, the scripture reading earlier. A beautiful psalm. It's one that speaks about God's presence with us. There's nowhere we can go where God is not present with us. There's, there's nothing that can happen to us that, that God doesn't see. I've often used Psalm 139 actually in, in hospital visitation, visiting someone, and I've often used Psalm 139 uh, to help them understand God's presence with them even there in the hospital. Just a beautiful psalm. However, sometimes in the hospital visitation, I've forgotten to stop at verse 18. And why would that be important to stop at verse 18? Well, let's, let's take a look at verse 19. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O God. Yikes. Uh, feels like a sudden change of tone there of, Lord, you're with us. And then all of a sudden, oh, that you would kill the wicked, O Lord. It just seems like such a, a jarring moment in this psalm. And what are we to make of that? What, it doesn't even sound Christian, does it? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like following Jesus in the way of love and forgiveness. It doesn't sound like love your neighbour. It doesn't sound like love your enemy. It doesn't sound like it fits with the fruit of the Spirit in, in our lives of love, joy, peace, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, self-control, and these kinds of things. It sounds very jarring to the Christian life. And it sounds jarring in this psalm, oh, that you would kill the wicked, O oh God. So what are we to think of that? And is this a verse in the Bible that we just turn a blind eye to and just pretend it's not there? Or do we recognize that this in two is part of the word of God and therefore it's for our instruction today too? Well, actually, this is, yes, part of the word of God and... It can be a very good part of the Word of God for our day. It can help us express some things. For example, we want to look at the fact that when the psalmist says, Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O God, he immediately says, And that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Notice that these people here, he's describing their bloodthirsty. In other words, these are people who would take people's lives. These are, these are killers. These are murderers. These are people who are destructive. These are people who would destroy innocent people. And so when we think of that, we want to recognize that here, what we have isn't so much a, a plea for revenge on the psalmist part, that the psalmist wants to take revenge on somebody, but rather what we have here is a plea for God to intervene. And so that's very important. Uh, I might want to pray a prayer of revenge. I First thing I think of is back to grade six, those kids that were picking on me in grade six, I might want to pray a prayer of revenge that the Lord would do something to them. Um, you know who you are, but um, no, uh, this, is not a, this is not a psalm, this is not a verse that would give us an excuse to, to not go down that difficult path of forgiveness. It doesn't give us a, a reason to avoid that difficult journey of loving people and forgiving them even when they've hurt us. It's not about revenge, but rather, again, it's about that plea for God, do something good on behalf of the innocent. Don't let these bloodthirsty men in the psalmist's case, don't let them come against people. They're going to shed blood again and again and again. They don't, they don't follow their, their, your way, O oh Lord. They speak of you maliciously. They, uh, they don't follow your way of love and your commandments. They, they, they do their own thing. They shed blood. So it's a plea here for something good to happen. And so we can have that same kind of plea in our day, especially in these days of pandemic. O oh God, that you would do something about this destructive force in our lives called COVID-19. This thing that has taken so many lives, this thing that threatens to take so many more, this thing that, well, people are either infected with it or they're affected by it. And there's so much destruction that has, so much that has been destroyed in our world because of it. And there's so much good God can bring out of that, yes. But yet when we look at this COVID-19, it is a destructive force in our world. And so... It's perfectly valid to pray, Lord, do something about that, to, 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 to pray, oh Lord, that you would kill this virus, just as the psalmist prays that you would kill the wicked and the bloodthirsty. This, this COVID-19 is bloodthirsty. Oh, that you would kill this virus. Oh, that you would kill cancers. Oh, that you would kill all manner of diseases. Those are perfectly valid prayers to pray. 
and, and along with, of course, praying for those who are praying for the scientists that are seeking cures and seeking vaccines and all these kinds of things. We want to pray for their success. That's all a part of this plea of God do something on behalf of the innocent, which fits in with the Psalm 139 verse 19 of, of kill the wicked. It's, it's a good expression of anger at the right thing. Uh, to be angry at disease, to be angry at these kinds of infections. That's a good thing to be angry about. And the psalmist says in verse 21 there, Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do we not hate those things that are destructive in people's lives? So that's one thing we want to think about it is, is, is the yearning for, for a plea for God to act on behalf of the innocent. It's also a matter of... of our yearning of our hearts for, for justice and mercy. Uh, when God is, is just towards the bloodthirsty, he's also merciful to those whom the bloodthirsty would, would, would take the lives of later. And so it's, a, it's an appeal to the, the justice of God. It's an appeal to the mercy of God at the same time. This psalm really in its entirety is about God knowing us. Uh, the, the psalm speaks about that in the beginning. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. And, and then at the end, he basically repeats that. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. So the psalm, is, this psalm really is about, oh God, you know me. You know me completely. And he goes on to speak about that in a way that's a bit of a journey uh, that we see at times. It's He recognizes that God knows him completely and Actually, it's a very uncomfortable thought in one way, because it's like, where can I flee from your presence? Uh, in verse 7, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? Because knowing that you know me well, that can be a scary thought. Yet by, as you get going through the psalm, you realize uh, your presence actually is a great comfort for me. And that in the end, you will lead me in the way everlasting. And so there's a bit of a journey here in this psalm of, you know me well, and that's kind of scary to well, you, you know me and you are with me and that's not scary. I can trust you. I thank you for that. And that can reflect, actually, is that the psalm overall can reflect our journey in life. Because when we think about God, no one knows us better than God. And that can be a scary thing. Uh, many people would, would hope that God does not exist because if he does, well, then God knows us and he knows that we don't really belong in his kingdom because uh, he knows what we've done. He knows what we've thought. Uh, it can be a scary thought of God existing. However, there's a journey of recognizing that God exists, but also God loves. No one knows us better than God, and yet no one has loved us better than God has. No one has done for us what God has done for us at the cross, when Christ, when his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sin, when his body was broken for us. No one has loved us so deeply, and yet God did that for us despite the fact that he knows us so well, despite the fact that he knows that we are sinful people, that, that we really don't belong in his kingdom in one way, and yet the Lord says to us, well, not only do you belong in my kingdom and I invite you to, to be a part of my kingdom, but I invite you to be in my family. You belong actually in my family. I've given you the right to be called sons and daughters of, of myself. And so it's just this wonderful journey that we're on of, oh, God knows us. And that's a scary thing to, well, actually, God knows us and forgives us. And it's wonderful that he knows us and God's presence with us through all of life and even through death and to, to resurrection and eternal life. God's presence. It's a wonderful journey. So Psalm 139 as a whole, uh, it can reflect back to us that journey of, Oh, it might be scary to know that God is with us and knows us, but actually, no, in the end, it's a very comforting thought that God knows us and is present with us uh, because he wants to be present with us. He wants to forgive us and spend eternity with us. So let's learn to pray along with the psalmist that God would deal with the destructive stuff in our lives, the destructive things in our world. But then let's also recognize where we are on that journey of recognizing that God is and he knows us completely. That can be a scary thing, but need not be a scary thing because God knows us completely and yet he still went to the cross for us. That incredible love God has for us. I hope that you know that God loves you that much.